Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Airport News Show, a half-hour program about the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. I'm Debbie Jones, Community Relations Administrator. Today's topic is the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. On past programs, we've discussed different events or initiatives or even the individual airports that make up the JAA. Well, today we're bringing it all together, talking about the Jacksonville Aviation Authority as a whole. How did the authority get started? What's its purpose? What's the future hold for the JAA? And today's guest is the perfect person to answer those questions. And I want to introduce him right now so we can get started talking about this exciting authority for Jacksonville. Please welcome Mr. John Clark, the Executive Director and CEO for the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. Welcome, John. Thank you, Debbie. I'm so glad you could be here because so many people don't realize what the authority does and is for Jacksonville. So can you kind of lay a foundation and give us some background about how the authority got started and what its purpose is for Jacksonville? Sure. Um, the Jacksonville Aviation Authority was uh, created uh, during the consolidation of the city and county of Jacksonville. Initially, it was a department of the city of Jacksonville. Um, the first creation was the Jacksonville Port Authority. I believe that was in 1967 uh, time frame. Um, and then when the consolidation took place in, in the 1968 uh, thereabout, uh, the airport um, was actually rolled under the Jacksonville Port Authority um, as an independent authority. Uh, so our beginnings were we were a department or a function of the city of Jacksonville during the consolidation of the city and county. Um, it rolled into uh, the Jacksonville Port Authority. Since that time, in uh, 2001, in October of 2001, the Jacksonville Aviation Authority was created um, by a bifurcation, a splitting of the Jacksonville Port Authority into two separate entities. Um, the Jacksonville Aviation Authority uh, is a subdivision of the state. It's a part of the consolidated government um, within the community of Jacksonville. But our jurisdictional body is, a, is an appointed board, which four of the members are appointed by the governor and three are appointed by the mayor. Um, under those governances, the board is charged with being a policy board to oversee the planning, development, the activities of the four airports in Duval County. And that's Jacksonville International Airport, that's Cecil Field, that's Craig Airport, and that's Herlong Airport. The other charge that the board has is to hire an executive director and CEO, and that's me. Um, so in October, on October 1, 2001, um, not even a month after the tragic events of 9-11, the Jacksonville Aviation Authority went into business, and that was created through the state legislative process. Um, as I said, the governing board is the Jacksonville um, board, uh, those appointed members. What we are charged to do is to make sure that the airports in, in Duval County um, are operated um, in a safe, um, orderly fashion, that the airports are self-sufficient so that it is not local tax dollars that then fuel the operating or the capital requirements in developing and maintaining the airport system in Jacksonville. Many people believe that um, because it is a public entity that local tax dollars right. pay for the airport systems in Jacksonville, um, and that's, that's not accurate. It is an asset that is owned by the community, if you will. It's a public asset. Um, however, the charge of that asset resides with the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. So when we look at the four airports that comprise the Jacksonville Aviation Authority, truly what our goal and our mission is, is to make sure that we are operating and developing an airport system that meets the current and projected need of aviation systems in Northeast Florida, in Jacksonville, Duval County. Our reach is a regional reach, because when we look at the users of our facilities, um, they come out of Georgia, they come out of uh, neighboring counties, so we view this uh, organization as truly a regional transportation organization. Also, as being um, a public airport, 
Um, we are part of a national transportation system. And so while um, we are governed, if you will, by local regulations, we're also governed by federal regulations. And so it is, it is a governmental entity, um, but it has many characteristics of operating like a private company because embedded in the federal law is it says that airports are to be self-sufficient. So in that, we have the ability to, to set rates, charges, um, lease terms so that the airport truly pays for itself. Um, so that's, that's what the Jacksonville Aviation Authority is. Um, it was created in order to, to provide um, the arm's length of, if you will, the um, city as a, as a government entity and give the, the airport the ability to go forward and to truly develop and uh, put capital infusion in. Um, like I mentioned um, earlier, it's not local tax dollars. The authority doesn't have the ability to impose taxes. Um, in fact, uh, in the late 90s, we were paying local taxes. Um, we, have, we have been working um, for a number of years because, like I said, we are a public entity, um, but we don't receive local tax dollars in order to operate. Um, when it's time to build a new runway, if it's time to build a new terminal, if it's time to add a taxiway or any of the facilities, those are done by the revenues that are generated by the authority. Um, we also will get uh, some state funding through the Florida Department of Transportation. Um, and because we're part of a national transportation system, we can apply and get federal grants from the uh, Department of Transportation. So in a, in a brief summary, um, that's what the Jacksonville Aviation Authority is, and that's how we're, we are governed. Well, I would like to, of course, give you the opportunity to talk about each of our individual four airports and the role and, that they have for the overall system. But what does it mean to Jacksonville to have this type of a transportation infrastructure. You know, you've got your roadway infrastructure and other transportation type systems. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for Jacksonville to have an aviation system? What that means, uh, Debbie, is that we are literally connected to the world and the runways allow commerce um, to be traded worldwide. And I can say worldwide because if you look at the complements of our airport system, um, with Jacksonville International Airport, a 10,000 foot runway, um, we, the runway was designed to equip um, a 747 um, fully loaded and so that it, recognizing the, the heat and the humidity and the characteristics of aircraft, so we can get maximum range on a fully loaded 747. Additionally, we, in 1999, took on Cecil Field with a 12,500-foot runway that has the capacity of taking anything that is in the inventory today and out into the future. So when I look at our, our airport system, truly it is a global link. Um, you know, as I travel the world and re try to recruit business to Jacksonville to do business at our airports, one of the things that I can tell you is that this saying that the world is, is getting smaller, um, it's true. The, the, our economies now throughout the world are, are, are inter interlinked. So when we, when we understand that and we look at our air, airport system, I think Jacksonville is blessed that we have four airports that are all part of a system, and it's a complementary system. Jacksonville International Airport, the role that it plays is to be a primary airport. And what that means is primary in terms of passenger service. Mm -hmm. Now, as an added benefit, we have integrated air cargo. The FedExes, the UPSs, those are integrated air cargo. Um, and there is some general aviation, and that's, that's the smaller aircraft, that's the business uh, a flyer that chooses to, tra to travel privately. So it accommodates those. But the beauty of having four airports is that we can begin to segregate various activities. Um, the best example I can give you is 
If you are a passenger and you fly out on a Delta, United, Southwest, any of the major carriers and you go to another airport, and typically one of the more congested airports, you get on that airplane, they back you away from the gate, you taxi out, and you sit there. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you, well, you know, we're number six in line for departure. Well, what we've been able to do in Jacksonville is to divert um, traffic that is non-commercial traffic, non-airline traffic, to the other airports. So our cost of doing business is very competitive. We don't have delay um, costs. Anytime there's delays in the, in the system nationally, I mean, you may get held on the ground in Jacksonville, but it's not a result of Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. It's a result of some of these more congested hub systems. And so, the, like I said, the beauty of what we have in Jacksonville, we look at Craig Airport. Its primary role is to provide corporate business aviation activity for Jacksonville and the region. We have some challenges with Craig because now Craig is truly beginning to fulfill that mission, and so we have some infrastructure improvements to do. Um, we look at Herlong. Herlong is, is a general aviation airport, but its primary role is to provide a, a, an airport environment with all of the facilities to accommodate those flyers who really want to just enjoy what flying, the, the pureness of flying, to go out on a Saturday or, you know, after work or before work, fire up their airplane and, you know, just fly around and then just enjoy flying. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that there are not business opportunities at Herlong, but its primary role is to provide a recreational flying environment. And so we are making sure that the improvements we do are all about enhancing those opportunities for the, the more recreational flyer. On the same side of town, the west side of town, we have Cecil Field. We acquired uh, 6,080 acres from the Department of Defense, the Navy, mm -hmm. um, during the, the Base Closure Act um, of 19, in 1999. It, I believe it was actually in 95, and by the time it closed, it was 99. Mm -hmm. um, so we conveyed the, that property through the FAA as a public airport conveyance. Um, so what Cecil Field provides for the airport system, like I said, it has a 12,500 foot runway. Literally, it can fly, handle anything, anything in the flying inventory. Its primary role is to provide heavy air cargo, um, maintenance, repair, and overhaul. Um, we also look at Cecil Field as a area where distribution and manufacturing will take place. Um, if your audience is not aware, just recently there was an announcement made by the mayor that Alinea, which is an Italian um, company, mm -hmm. will be assembling, building an aircraft for our United States military um, at Cecil Field. And we're now working with Alinea to help them get the facilities developed and into production. Um, if all goes according to plan, we should see aircraft rolling out towards the end of 2009, early 2010 at Cecil Field. So Cecil Field adds a complement to our airport system um, that otherwise we wouldn't have had. But literally, if you take the inventory of those four airports, we can accommodate any, any type of commerce that is known today, and I would say even into the future. So I, we have a very strong um, aviation system. Part of our charge is to continue to make sure that we're not only meeting the needs for today, but we look out far enough. Um, and so we engage in airport master planning. And all four airports have um, airport master plans. And they look out about 20 to 25 years. And then on a, every five years, we update those. Um, so we are in the process of doing a master plan revision update at JIA, at Jacksonville International Airport. So we have taken each one of those airports, created a business model to say that they complement each other, they don't compete, but they provide us with an inventory of opportunity for our community. And that's got to be a tremendous selling point, like you mentioned, in trying to attract business here because we have this diversified system, which I don't imagine is that common in the United States. It really isn't. And, and if you go to most metropolitan areas, l large cities specific, you can find that there is 
multiple airports in the area, but they all have different ownerships. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you a, a good example of that. If you, um, Dallas, large metropolitan area, you have Love Field, which is the home of Southwest, and then not even 20 miles away, you have the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, the home of American Airlines. Mm -hmm. They're s in the same jurisdictional body, if you will, mm -hmm. but they're separate ownership. Mm -hmm. what, what we have is the benefit of having an airport system so that we can ensure that there is not cannibalization, um, that we can make a complementary system um, to the benefit of the, of the community. And I like to tell people, what does it mean to you, the traveler? You're always next in line for takeoff. Absolutely. As opposed to number six or 26 or 36. Yes. So very important. Well, you mentioned each of the airport's roles. Mm -hmm. And so I know that there's so much going on within the system at each of the airports. Would you just spend a few moments on each airport and sort of hit the highlights of the initiatives and projects that are going on as we work towards developing our system into the future. Sure. Um, I'll start with Jacksonville International Airport. Um, in 2005, uh, the Jacksonville Aviation Authority um, Board adopted a strategic agenda. And embedded in that strategic agenda, it looked at each one of the airports. And based on those defined missions of the airport, um, we have programs in place. At Jacksonville International Airport, one of the things that we've determined is that if we take our master plan that spells out over the 25 years what we believe are the, will be the aeronautical requirements to meet the growth of this community in this region, one of the things that is important is our terminal facilities. So we embarked upon a capital program and if you take it in its entirety, it represents about $380 million, from parking to terminal. Um, so now we're in the, if you will, the final phases of completing our terminal expansion program, at least for the near term. And what that involved was increasing the amount of ticket counter space. It involved increasing the baggage handling capacity for the airport. Um, it in, it in, detailed um, creating additional parking. Um, and probably the most notable um, thing is we have restructured our concourses. The Jacksonville International Airport has three primary concourses where people would travel, come in and board or debark from the aircraft. In order for us to grow into the future, it was determined that that layout was not sufficient. It would create long-term inefficiencies in operating uh, Jacksonville International Airport. So our designers and planners uh, gave us a layout, a schematic that would take us well into the future. Um, in May of this year, we completed the first piece of that, which was the replacement of Concourse A. Mm -hmm. It has beautiful new, uh, um, ceilings and a lot of glass and uh, has new shops. So A will be totally finished um, in terms of its utilization November of this year. And then the next phase of it is C. Um, we will open half of C in November and then in April of next year we'll open all of it. Then the next piece of it, the next part of this expansion program will be to tear down Concourse B and have all of the activity that we know today residing on Concourse A and on Concourse C. Mm -hmm. We will then move forward in preparing the ramp uh, apron area where the aircraft park and um, load passengers. We will have that area prepared for the next piece of the expansion, which would be the replacement of B. Now, we won't, we won't replace B as we know it today, being a, a finger or a pier um, uh, concourse. It will have a, a transitional piece to it that will allow passengers to move through to go to a new n um, node, and then we will build off of that. So it'll be almost a duplication of A and C, just one um, step removed from that. So it's pretty exciting. But that design has the capacity to take us well into the future. Mm -hmm. What we have put in place now 
um, as of April of next year, the design of that facility will take us uh, to a little over 8 million passengers. Mm -hmm. um, and we're about 6.2 million passengers mm -hmm. now. So that will suffice us for enough time that we can then put Concourse B in to meet the anticipated growth and in, in, uh, next phase of this. The capital program, um, like I said, in its entirety was roughly $380 million. The piece that we're working on now is about $170 million. Um, and I say this very proudly because I look at our team of, of, of managers um, that do the engineering, designing, and making sure that things, they have stayed within budget and they are ahead of schedule. And there's not too many capital projects of that magnitude that that occurs. So, I tell you, I think our, our folks are doing a really good job in making sure that we are staying within budget and on time. Um, the next piece of what's going on at JIA, um, we are looking at diversifying our revenues. It's a system initiative, but we look at each airport. When you look at that 25-year um, plan, like I said, it will show you where we need to be from an aeronautical standpoint. So we could, we could take the position that we would just do those things, um, but we've determined that in order to really make uh, the, the capital programs work, we need to diversify our revenue. So we have looked at land that won't be needed, at least in the near future, um, for aeronautical purposes, and we're putting that land into production. How are we doing that? We are um, working with private companies, developers, mm -hmm. to put commercial activity on the land that is non-aeronautical in its designation. What that does is that provides a long-term stream of cash flow to the authority to then put back into the infrastructure for taxiways, runways, terminals, et cetera. Um, we feel pretty good about how that is um, coming together. Uh, we worked out a deal a couple of years ago with a company called Majestic, which is um, the largest privately owned development company in the U.S. Um, and their total build out, now this is long term, over 65 years, is just short of 4 million square feet of primarily, primarily uh, distribution warehouse, but some mixed use. So that's how we see the evolution of JIA um, over the next decade uh, taking shape. Cecil Field, uh, uh, a lot of priority, a lot of focus on Cecil Field right now. Um, we see that Cecil Field has significant potential, um, and I'm going to say promise to it, right. a little stronger than potential. So what we are looking at now is we, we have completed a master development plan, looking at the aeronautical master plan and looking at a, the highest and best use of, once again, those residual properties. That long, 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 long term, we may right. need for aeronautical purposes, but in the meantime, we can use those to create um, opportunity for revenue generation and, and diversifying our revenue sources. So we are, we've created this master plan. We hired a, a company um, that has given us highest and best use. We've done a solicitation. Um, we have three companies, three development companies. Um, national, multinational companies that have expressed an interest. We have begun to sit down with them to talk about what those development plans look like. Um, so we're believing within the next six months to a year, we should be able to codify what developments can take place at Cecil Field in support of the aeronautical. Um, I mentioned to you that at Cecil Field, um, the, the mayor's announcement of Alenia, mm -hmm. we are going to be working with Alenia to make sure that they can be producing those aircraft um, before April of 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 2010. So, so um, in addition to that, we are working with Flightstar to find expansion opportunities. And what they do is maintenance and overhaul and conversion of, of aircraft. Um, we are working out, we have two spec hangars that we're going to build. One of the challenges that we have found to date with Cecil Field is that there's a lot of interest, um, but we don't have facilities. We don't have one hangar that's available today. Okay. So we are going to build, the JAA is going to build two spec hangars so that we can now be able to bring business in. 
we are working with uh, Florida Community College, uh, FCCJ, um, to build a coating facility which will allow companies to paint um, their aircraft. We believe that there is a strong market for that because of the environmental concerns, but there are technologies available to address that. So we would have a state-of-the-art facility built in order to address that, and we think that there is a great opportunity for that to occur. Well, there are just a few minutes left, and we okay. still have two airports left. So okay. if you could uh, go through, I know Craig Airport has got some initiatives going on, and so in just a few minutes, okay. can you talk through some of the uh, things going on at Craig? Craig Airport, um, it is designated as our primary general aviation reliever airport. And what that really means very quickly is that it is the airport that has been designated to truly relieve Jacksonville International Airport of the smaller general aviation type of activity, the business, um, smaller business activity. In that, um, we have been working t with the community, with the city council, with the mayor's office, um, to try to figure out how we can extend the runway. We've completed a master plan. Um, it's being reviewed by the FAA, the Florida Department of Transportation. We've put it out before the community. What's important about that is that there are more and more jets, smaller jets, medium-sized jets, that are using Craig Airport. Um, Craig Airport has a 4,000-foot runway as its primary airport. It has an instrument landing system, which allows aircraft to land in inclement weather. But as the primary reliever airport, it's important that we allow the development of, of Craig Airport to match the development of JIA. And so we are trying to work through a very difficult um, and challenging issue, but how is it that we can extend the runway at Craig and still maintain um, an environment with the immediately surrounding community to be a good neighbor as best as possible. So we're trying to figure out ways that with an extended runway, how do we best mitigate um, noise impact? Um, if there is additional traffic, how that gets mitigated? Um, it clearly is an, an economic benefit to the community at large. Like I said, we serve a region. Um, and so we look at it as a regional impact. And that's, that's probably the single largest challenge that the JAA has in terms of how we meet our future um, air traffic uh, needs for the Northeast Florida. So um, the board, uh, the JAA board, has convened and put together an ad hoc committee to work directly with the community on that. OK. Well, we are just about out of time. And there, Thank you so much for being here to give us an overview of the Aviation Authority. And maybe we can have you come back on a future show and talk about what the future holds for the Aviation Authority. OK, would love You'll to. You'll do that? I okay. would love to. I'm going to hold you to. Okay. <laughs> OK, well, thank you, John Clark, Executive Director and CEO of the Jacksonville Aviation Authority, for being here with us. And thank you for joining us on this edition of the Airport News Show. We'll see you next.